Hello, and welcome to The War Report. I'm your host, Cyrus, joined by Quan. This is a show where we talk about NXT and AEW. I am back. It's feel good to be back. Witness something beautiful on assignment. Um, but no, we back. We we're all good. Back to normal. Things is going to have to change again, but it is what it is. <laughs> What's up, man? How was, uh, how was the trip? It was amazing. I love it. Um, I like, uh, I never really, in all the times that I've been to LA, which is like, this is, I think like my third time now, um, mm-hmm. I've never had an extended time in Long Beach, um, which is kind of just like, you know, I would compare it to, uh, downtown Bayside, if you're from Miami. Um, and it's a lot cleaner <laughs> than downtown Bayside. It is nicer, mm. it's cooler, uh, cause you know, less humidity and all that. Um, fantastic. The only shit that was really, uh, the only shit that was really killing me was Ubers were mad expensive. Well, I believe Ubers it. They're, they're expensive. Crazy. I believe Ubers it. Um, but nah, man, uh, the ceremony, the wedding, all that, uh, yeah, I guess I'm the only person on the network that went, so I could talk all about it, I guess. Yeah, um, it beautiful, man. Look, it looked really, it really <laughs> beautiful, man. From the pictures and videos I saw, just all the love in the room, it seemed like yeah, it was man. a good time. It, it, uh, it tugged at the heartstrings, man. It was fantastic. The ceremony was great. Um, you know, my, my travel partner, Mark, uh, we didn't even know that we had the same flight, but you know, <laughs> oh, did, we, oh, you guys were on the same flight. You just worked out like yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, because uh, we were just like, oh, we're gonna take like uh, a flight, so we show up early morning, yeah. Cause, you know, show up early morning, leave late, you know, so we could spend as much time uh, with the folks as possible, all the RNC fam and all that. But it was fantastic, man. Um, the wedding ceremony, like itself. I have never, I haven't been, to, this is like my first wedding as an adult, as somebody that is over the age of 18. It was amazing. <laughs> um, I don't like, I don't even know how to describe it outside of amazing. Like, uh, you know, the, the vows was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the vows are very cute. Uh, did you cry? Nah. Uh, you tear for a little bit? I didn't cry. You know, I wish I did. Cause they were, it, it was it was beautiful, but yeah, I, it didn't get a tear uh, out of me. Um, not not that they, it wasn't like good or anything. It's just like I don't know. I just didn't cry, but it was really good. <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, what is it? Justin Beyonce's brother is the person who officiated the wedding. Well, that's dope. Okay. He had a little, uh, you know, a little speech. I guess like a, you know, just uh, something that he cooked up as well. He sprinkled in a Roman Reigns quote in it, and that was hilarious. Um, (laughs) That was really good. That was fantastic. Um, Where we were sitting for the ceremony, it was um, no nobody no uh, because Ty doesn't do anything on the RNC network. Like nobody heard his voice, but it was uh, Ty's girlfriend, Mark, me, Josh Pease from. Black print. The black print. And Josh just felt the need to try all his stand-up shit as the ceremony's going on. So this dude was just cracking me the fuck up. Well, I think that's why I didn't cry because this thing was making me laugh too fucking you laugh. much. <laughs> yeah. Um when the uh you know when the official or whatever the uh the person is called. When he asked for the vows and um, Pat from Late Fees uh, on the RNC watch, uh, he passes, he goes up to pass. Uh, no, I think it was Eric. Either way, same person, Late Fees, uh, same group, Late Fees. <laughs> he has the vows in the, like uh, in an envelope and he passes it to, uh, to Justin. And then Josh just goes to my ear. And he just whispers, the Elder Scrolls. And I was just like, <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> and if you know Josh, you would not assume that this nigga knows what the fucking Elder Scrolls is. What even Elder Scrolls is. is. <laughs> yeah. Like, you would have to play the game enough to know that the Elder Scrolls is actually a piece of paper. <laughs> um, That's funny. 
but um the dinner the food was amazing um Justin was doing his rounds after I got my food and he was just like nigga why you got so much damn macaroni and cheese on your plate Come on, it now. was just like it was just like a massive plate of macaroni and cheese a piece of chicken and like short rib that was fantastic uh that boy used all his money on the catering. It was fantastic. Um, and then, like, you know, that the ceremony or, like, the part where niggas was dancing was all great. Wale showed up for the wedding. That was very funny. He uh, he stopped by for a little bit, was That's very adamant about wanting to give a speech <laughs> for the oh, wedding. Uh, he, uh, he was sitting at our table, so I, he was oh, very giddy and very happy about the whole thing. Uh, so that was very cute yeah. to see. Um, <laughs> so the uh, the bride's dad goes on, mm-hmm. and then he just like taps me on the show. You think like, you think I could give a quick speech real quick? And I'm just like, what the fuck are you asking me for? Why are you asking? <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it was fantastic, man. Uh, seeing all yeah, the boys awesome. hanging out with everybody. Um. It sucks because I had to leave on Saturday because I had to go to work on Sunday. Uh, I think Mark stayed till uh, Sunday. A lot of people stayed till Sunday, which I was very sad about. Um, before I left, we were just like hanging out at his apartment complex. And, you know, <laughs> for everybody that wanted, uh, wanted a speech or say something nice about Justin, I gave him the opportunity to do so. And that was fantastic. Um, yeah, I saw I saw your little picture. I saw the picture you tried to give. give the that post. was that. That was very <laughs> random. Uh, we all just had shots of tequila, and then there, uh, the bride's dad was just like, "Who wants to give the speech?" And then Pat was just like, "Cyrus," and I said, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody loved it. Uh, Justin's dad loved the speech. It was fantastic. Uh, when I got to talk to him, it was fantastic, man. Uh, the family on both sides were fantastic they were very friendly very loving and all that I so that. i love shout that out to Jess. So cool. uh, i'm not sure if justin has ever said his wife's name on any podcast so i don't want to expose her yeah no, that's but, fine um, yeah I, I think i think he has so, but let's, just in case okay not. i'm not sure i'm not I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to expose her identity but shout out to those two um the davis the love was in the air it was fantastic man uh yeah, the flight back man. was the flight back was very shitty, but you know, I this is I drank a lot, so I think this is the first day where you know I felt like a normal person, <laughs> mm, okay. and I didn't feel like a normal person until two hours ago. So you should be. yeah, <laughs> that's uh, how it should be. Fuck that. What? Uh, 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 a lot of tums and aspirin. <laughs> I know that plane ride was rough. Shit, last oh. time I took a plane, I was I was sober. I, I was it was the worst spirits in my life. I got nauseous. I don't know. I, I don't know what's happening to me. Normally, I like to sleep for flights, but I was up for the five hours and it was terrible. Um, mm. but let's get back to business, man. Oh, also, you uh, you and Mills held it down uh last week. I heard the episode. It was uh <laughs> very funny, very good stuff. Um, thank you. It was great. I loved all the fucking N64 songs that were played in the background. Oh, in the background? I was hoping somebody <laughs> would notice. Uh, I was walk. I was walking on my lunch break and in the the uh, the save room for <laughs> for Golden Eye played. That's just so hard. <laughs> I swear to God, when I first download TikTok, those are all the TikToks I was getting. Was the, just like how hard that beat was. <laughs> Um, I remember the other songs I picked. I think I picked um you picked the Donkey uh, Kong Water, the water, the water level of Donkey yeah, Kong. Yeah, I'm was but it, it Mario, wasn't Mario it, but it wasn't no, it was Super Mario, it was Mario 64. It wasn't okay. the the goaded song, the aqua level of um Donkey Kong Country. I was gonna pick that, but I think I couldn't find the good that one. That shit is hard. Yeah, I, I think I was gonna pick Donkey Kong and then I couldn't find yeah. the good one. I did three songs. That, I don't remember what the other one was either, but um, I don't know what the other one is, but oh, I th- it's whatever the beat that little B I love you is on. Oh, uh, the final, the final, I think fantasy, that's final yeah, fantasy, that final fantasy uh, 13, 11. No, someone gonna yell, somebody gonna yell at me. I don't remember what the hell, what, I think it's 10. It was. I think it's 10. No, it's 10. Yeah, it's 10. Final fantasy 10. Yeah, it is. It's 10. I know my final. Um, 
But now nah, let's get back into business. Let's get into Indies Trenches, man. NXT is back on tour, and I hate it. You going? I no, motherfucker. I ain't going to Central I Florida. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know uh, um, Florida locations. So I don't know what's what. I don't so know how far you I was are very, I was, I was very, I was very disappointed in this announcement because honestly, I thought they were gonna be like all around. Like I, I thought they you were thought, gonna do this shit. Yeah. But then it was just like, okay, we're only doing Central and North Florida. The coconut loop. But it had Jacksonville on there. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, it has it has like it, Jacksonville and Georgia. Tampa. Yeah, yeah, so I was just like, what the, you, you motherfuckers come to Miami all the time. Oh, like, you know, y- y'all have a space, like, you know, a space where y'all could come to Miami every single fucking time. Why the fuck are y'all coming to Miami? They don't fuck with y'all like that, man. Like, that shit is nuts. That shit blow minds, bro. That shit pissed uh, me the right. fuck off when I was looking at the dates and it said Jacksonville, no Miami. Come on, man. For anybody who cares, the dates are well, I'm not gonna say the dates, but it's just June. They're gonna be in Tampa, Largo, Jacksonville, uh, Venice Community Center of Venice, Donellan. Dun- Dun- How you say that? Donellan, mm-hmm. Citrus Springs Community Center in Donellan, Englewood neighborhood in Orlando, Melbourne Auditorium in Melbourne, and Coco Armory in Coco. I know they do that spot a lot, mm-hmm. uh, Armory. But yeah, they're back on the road. Hopefully, you know, this leads to more shows outside of Florida. You know, um, maybe some episodes you know, of you know, NXT. They're going to be doing all of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I do, I can I, well, I hope for like their fall tour, their winter tour, they like go. Yeah, you go to Atlanta or something. Remember they were doing those? Remember they did those string of shows in Atlanta one time for like mm-hmm. a month? Do that again. That was yeah. cool. Um, if, Was Tampa on any of those? You said Denver, right? Uh, I believe Tampa's on there, yeah. Um, I'll probably talk to a friend to see if they want to go to the Tampa show. How um, far is Tampa from Miami? I would say like four hours. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, June tenth. That's the first. That's the first show. So uh, June tenth. I think that might be yep. too soon. Um, yeah, that's what I figured. I'll talk to somebody about it. But like, yeah, uh, all, all those locations, I would say they're like about like. Except Jacksonville is like four to six hours. Yeah. So um you leave at the right time, you'll you'll get there. Obviously, you want to go a day before, but uh neither here nor there. Um, not excited about it. Um next, this was talked about on the A show, but I guess we can kind of go a little more in. I, I don't even know if I can, bro. But um Nash Carter uh addresses and apologizes. For his uh, Hitler photos that led yeah. to his WWE release, which now we could confirm that is what was the nail in the coffin. That's what I figured it was. All that other stuff, it was all hearsay. Her story was changing too much mm-hmm. in time. Well, I mean, for, for we don't we don't know we don't know mm-hmm. if whatever happened happened. I'm not saying she's a liar. I'm just saying the story switched around. A lot of stuff. Who knows? But mm-hmm. what we can confirm is. That is him doing a Hitler pose with a Hitler mustache on the internet, and that's what got him fired. So there you have it. Um, I'm not going to go over that. He put out a whole statement. I don't need to go over the whole thing. Basically, he was, you know, the usual kind of apology in these situations. I didn't know the magnitude of, you know, what Hitler was, I guess, in, mm-hmm. in 2015. I was young and dumb. You know, the, the usual. And like I said on this show, that's not gonna cut it for me. You knew damn well, absolutely, who Hitler not. was and what Hitler was about. Don't you 20, got caught up in some... twenty fifteen? Twenty fifteen. Yeah. He didn't know. He, he didn't know that Nazis was bad. <laughs> he know that anti-Semitic shit was bad. Hold on, how old oh, is this motherfucker? I, I was just gonna go look that up. <laughs> like, come on, you was probably this motherfucker he, was probably like twenty one, bro. He's twenty eight, so. In 2015, that was what seven years ago. So he was, yeah, 21, 21 years old. You're old enough to know. Come on, bro. You know better. Yeah, uh, there was one thing I saw about the press really, or uh, like that whole thing that really pissed me off was <clears throat> somebody was just like, "Well, you never know with education in America." I said, "Come on, bro. World War II is fourth grade shit, bro." 
Yeah. Like, come on. And then you kind of like go back into it at like ninth grade for world history. We know what we know. We know what Hitler like. We know how bad World War Two was. I'll put this way. I'd rather he just had just said, yo, I was young and dumb and I tried to be edgy. Just being edgy. Just edgy yeah. And I'm an idiot. That's all, that's all you had to say to, to, to try yeah. to lie and say you didn't know what Hitler was what, about. Ma- makes, makes it way yeah. worse. If you knew enough to know what the salute was and then knew what the mustache was, it was, then you knew what, what at, at minimum, you knew he was a bad person. You shouldn't be doing that. At minimum, you do that. Do better. Yeah, just uh, straight up embarrassing. Yeah, uh, kind of no sympathies from me here. Like, if you know, like, like you said, like, if you know what a Nazi is, that's like, even to like joke about it is just like, man, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't even know what to say for real. Like, I'm not sure if I should give him the rest in piss or you know. Just do better, do man. Better. Just do better. I'm I'm just like, come on, bro. Uh hey man, if you want to accept that apology, go ahead, man. It is what it is. Um, in other news, JR signs an extension with AEW um until 2024. I can't say this is a good thing. <laughs> right, get your um, bag, JR, man. Get your bag. Yeah, but you know, as a consumer, um, I don't know, man. Like, is this, is this gonna motivate him to like actually know who the fuck the people on the roster are, or he's just gonna I, go, or is he just gonna go Excalibur? Tell them all about him, man. <laughs> I feel like Jr. hasn't done that in a while. I feel like he's he's pretty like um, on point with who the people are nowadays for the most part. Maybe not so much the guys who are on like dark. Or whatever, but you know the usuals. He he got it down pretty down pat. But um, hey man, Jim Ross. I guess he he gonna keep doing this until he can't do it no more. Um, congrats to him. That's hey, all man. I really got for Jim Ross. I'll say this: when Jim Ross says I like to do commentary for AEW and New Japan because he keeps me out the house after my wife passed, all that I'm just like, hey man, I feel him. That's great, yeah. but can you at least be good at this? Yeah, it's so crazy too because you know you know I've been I've been rewatching two thousand one uh, WWE's Raw and SmackDowns. Jim mm-hmm. Ross is so good. Like the early two thousands, like it can't be understated how good he was back. Like he made everything feel so important. He was going crazy for Kurt Angle during these these Raws I'm watching. It's like he's so good at getting guys over. I don't know what at what point where he lost that. I guess it just comes with age. I don't know, but it's just like man. If we can get that Jim Ross back. The first May Young Classic. Was he into it? I don't I don't even remember. Even if he was, terrible. Him and Lita? Terrible on commentary. And then, like, he, was, um, he, he was he been had been checked out by them at that point. Um mm-hmm. the last I will say the last time we really had a really good Jim Ross call was when John Moxley debuted at um at the first double or nothing. I would say that was the probably the last time we had a really good Jim Ross call. You know, uh, you know, not to really be shitting on Jim Ross crazy, like congrats on you uh, getting your um, extension and all that. But man, I feel like there, <clears throat> I feel like there are some really good Jim Ross calls, um, you know, of recent, but it just gets overshadowed by all the, you know, all the. Because, like, there's more quotes where he's just like, what the hell is this person doing? Cover him. Or just, like, you know, making yeah, the wrestlers seem like that. they're making a very bad decision. Which um, they are, but you shouldn't than, highlight that. You shouldn't highlight that. Yeah. Even if they are doing something dumb. No, the worst point yeah. he was like, why did he stop running? Like, like, there's an invisible wall. I was like, I don't know. That's just yeah, like don't, do that. don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> he used to be really bad like, on this show. There's a couple like that on this show tonight, but uh, nah, there's just like more of that than like really good calls. So, you know, obviously it just gets buried in uh, all of it. Yeah. But <clears throat> next news, which is one I was trying to keep up with while I was in LA. And 
man, it got two, it got one paragraph too much for me, boy. <laughs> Um, so basically last week, me and Meals kind of missed it, but at some point during commentary, they did say that Hikaru Rashida would be unable to wrestle in the Owen Hart tournament. <laughs> and then they made a tweet maybe on that Friday, I believe. And, and then her response was, what? Because <laughs> they said she was injured and she was unable to compete. However, mm -hmm. Hikaru Rashida is in Japan at the moment. Um, and she said... She responded after the what tweet. She said, well, I already had four matches after the street fight. And I just finished the greatest fighting musical, which was like an 180 minute wrestling match. I don't know. <laughs> but I seem to have been injured. Japanese wrestling is nothing for them. I'm so sorry. And sorry, I couldn't be in the tournament, too. And then she posted another update. And then, then you know, <laughs> the next day. After my mm -hmm. Philadelphia street fight, a doctor checked from AEW was required to participate in the Owen Hart Cup. And I couldn't re-enter the country in time. I'm sorry to disappoint everyone. The difficulties sometimes happen with international talents. I feel healthy and never stop trying to improve. Please cheer for Chris Statlander while I do my best in Japan. Holy Sheeta will be back soon. Now, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. This is old. Me, that sounded like Tony, Tony Khan made the call and said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, man, delete that. <clears throat> delete that real quick. Cause I mean, how you how you go from I'm healthy enough to compete compete I thought I was competing to now I don't know if I'm healthy enough to compete and I won't I won't I, be able to make it in time after already doing four matches after the match I think you yeah. know if you fine or not and then that whatever a hundred uh hundred and eighty minute musical I if you wrestle for that long you are okay yeah that's fine um. I don't know why they said she was injured. I wish they just said that, you know, internet due to international travel issues. Like that would have been perfectly fine. Yeah. No, I don't know you know why, why they didn't do that? Because I don't think Tony Khan wanted to look dumb and be like, why they book her if they knew she was going to Japan or whatever. But why this lead why book her if she hurt? That too. But this leads to me a report. I didn't put it in the docket, but a report that was kind of going around earlier. Only reason I didn't really put it in because was because of um the source of it, which is from Voices of Wrestling, who kind of stated, you know, <laughs> there's been chaos backstage at AEW and reports of things like um, just matches, not people not knowing the matches finishes um, before to like moments before they go out. Just a lot of just there's a lot of miscommunication. And I think it shows um, not only. Uh, you know, in a situation like Kakar Rashida, but even when you're watching the show, even when we watch the show tonight. You could tell, like, they went way over time at some point because they rushed the hell out of that main event, which was probably before the better anyway because that match was terrible. But mm -hmm. you could just tell, like, there's it's like something, there's some miscommunications going on. I don't know if that's because Tony Khan just has too much on his plate and he needs to delegate it. We don't know the, you know, the back that you're working or no, just what's going on. I don't think he got but, too much of on his plate. I just feel like with the way that, like, so much things just kind of just, gets approved or just like you know throw by the wayside and like i'm sure people are coming up with like him with ideas and he's just like okay that sounds good and then like this is hands off with it yeah yeah um, um, i found the report real quick it just was um it says uh yeah chaotic sorry. lack of structure with common complaints ranging from not knowing angles or finishes until close to showtime and things like redundant finishes and angles to set up matches being very frustrating uh, there's a quote that says, every single one of us is pulling our hair out, according to one source. So, but I want to preface by saying that was from Voices of Wrestling. So, you know, take whatever that report was <laughs> with a grain of salt. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I think we, we've been new this or been new that. Um, even before the Big Swole shit, like we all know how like we... This podcast has heavily documented how chaotic uh, AEW shows have felt in a very, like, for a very long time. So, like, for people to just be, like, you know, finally admitting that it's like that, no surprise to me. Is, is, is there, like, an like a NDA, that deal that just went up that y'all finally could just admit that shit not going, like, smooth over there? 
I think it just took time. You know, I think you know, these, <laughs> first, these first two and a half years really felt like a honeymoon phase. People were just happy to be there. It's not WWE. It's something else. Is an alternative. You can, you know, you can be more like your indie gimmick. You don't have to change too much. And I, now I just think people are just like realizing, like, hey, there's some bullshit going on over here, man. Um, we got to get together because, like, you know, contrary to what you know people might think, listening to us, but. Well, me personally, I can't speak for Cyrus, but I, I want I want AEW to, to succeed and be a, be a thing that lasts forever. So um, I hope they get it together, man. Uh, I really hope Tony Khan kind of figures out that he, maybe it's it's okay to delegate some things. It is also okay to tell like some of the wrestlers no or to rein some stuff in. You know, uh, or... hey man, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I think that I'm done being optimistic. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. That's it. <laughs> like, WWF even has rough patches here and there. You know what I mean? But like, a couple like, years. When's the good patches here? My fa- like my fa- my fondest memories of AEW, like actually being like really good before we like talk about the show. <laughs> is uh you know those uh what is it i think it was like 2000 that october of 2019 yeah. fucking nuts of a show no you know what my when favorite I, when i went to bash in the beach in miami i like that show a lot that fucking yeah. uh what is it the fiddle uh the tag team fiddle four away that shit had the arena going fucking up i don't remember what the hell that match was without without um it was drastic of, expressing that Nah, it was like LAX, the Young Bucks, someone else, and I think like even Kenny Omega was like in it. Uh, something. Was it Kenny like, Hangman? It fucking... No, I don't think so. I think it was like uh, before that. Oh. I don't know. It was a lot of people. It was like the first batch at the uh, batch at the beach. Um. Also, I think my favorite run of shows was just the build up to uh, Revolution twenty twenty. The whole build up, like there was like six straight episodes mm-hmm. where it was like back to back heat. Every single one of them. Um, I will say recently the show has regressed. I will say that much. Um, oh, this show? I know I said it two weeks ago that this this episode was really bad, but come on, like this shit. Rem- like when I was watching this, this reminds me of when you know me and Marjani were just like, oh, we can count how many times this happens in one show. Like we can like count how many like beat down segments they are. How many like like. It is insanely noticeable. They're insane flaws. Like even when you're trying to ignore it, you know what? You know what? I wish I can, I can't have I, I can't have faith in the show no more, man. I wish you were a wrestling fan in the early 2000s. There used to be this uh, browser based game called um, Extreme Warfare Extreme Warfare Revenge. I used to play it all the time, and I know Tony Khan. Used to play, used to play it all the time, <laughs> and I can tell because the way he books his shows are just like a game of extreme warfare revenge. If you ever have a chance, look that up because that's exactly I I know I can I can just tell that's where he gets his booking from. He probably I miss uses Flash the book to his day. <laughs> I miss Flash games, but nah, man. Like I like I know it's like you know being me being cynical and being me and negative, but it's just like I'm tired, bro. I can, I cannot I can't. There hasn't, like, I don't think there's been a good main event this whole year. Yeah, he's the second the last second last hour of this show till May 18th has been ass. How am I supposed to have faith in this shit, bro? I'm tired. I mean, the first hour would be good. That's not enough, unless they're <laughs> gonna be a one-hour show. Then I, wish dog, it was. If I wish it was, was one man. hour. You cannot say you wish this show was one hour and then think this shit is good. Come <laughs> on, bro. <laughs> you can't say this would be really good if the first half or, or like the second half was like cut. I mean, I would say that about Raw. I say if it was only two hours of Raw instead of three, I would love that show so much more. But that's but, two yeah. out of the three. That's not a half. Oh, you're, being gen- you're being generous. You're, you're being Come generous. On, math, Come on, math man. Come on, math man. Speaking of math, again, Come on, math man. man let's, let's, let's get to AEW, man. 
sadly. All right, let's get into it. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD's former tag team partner, Maki Ito, coming in as the Joker. This was a scene at Revolution last year. Maki Ito and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, victorious as the tag team. And now they find themselves... So, Owen Hart tournament. Uh, let's get all this Owen Hart tournament stuff out of the way. So, Samoa Joe versus the Joker. And the Joker is Johnny Elite. Yo, it was so, it was so funny because when they saw Johnny Elite, the crowd went absolutely nuts. And then John Morrison came out <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> and, oh. He saw that motherfucker I, with his right hand in the air. <laughs> his right arm in the air. I, I won't say it was like silence after that, but it definitely petered out. It went from a 10 mm -hmm. to like a six. Mm -hmm. And but for go ahead. I mean, I like Johnny Elite. You do. So I think it's I think it's a much better get than Johnny uh Johnny Gargano at the current moment. Um I think he's a lot more versatile than uh, what he can do. Um, I think what I really think is, I think this is a really good replacement for Jack Evans. <laughs> this is definitely a Jack Evans upgrade. Absolutely. Yeah. He um, can do everything Jack Evans can do, and he just looks looks better at it. He's a bigger mm -hmm. guy. He he could bot he he could botch better. <laughs> he could uh, he could flip better. He could talk better. That's what damn show. Um, really? I hope that he is all elite, and he, they can he, actually he get the do something. He, with him. he didn't get the graphic, they, so I don't. I don't think the, so. Uh, well, I like him a lot, so I hope they actually do like really good stuff with him uh, going forward. But like I say, for the last fifteen debuts, I'm really excited for it, but not under the Tony Khan playbook. So we'll see what happens here. Um, I'm surprised that that was him and Joe's first ever singles match against each other. They're both from mm -hmm. the West Coast. They've both been wrestling mm -hmm. for about the same amount of time. I think Morrison probably started in 2004, 2005-ish after Tough Enough. And mm -hmm. Joe started in like 99, and they've never wrestled each other. It really blows my mind because they both wrestled everywhere. Um, the match was fine, though. I thought the match was decent. I will say I will say, since Joe's come back, I was a little concerned after the, the, um, the NXT title match. I was like, oh boy, is Joe is Joe done for good? But I think he's um, definitely got in better shape. He looks better out there. He, I yeah. mean, he's obviously not in, you know his prime or even like peak NXT shape, but it looked good. This match was decent, decent match. I really, you know, this match is not bad. Outside yeah. of those couple spots, I think if you watched it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. But um. I thought the match was good. I have no complaints. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, Tony Khan showed some, res show some restraint or, you know, the one thing he doesn't do is that he hates DQ finishes, even though they make sense. Um, so, like, as soon as the match was over, then, you know, uh, Dutt and the rest of them losers uh, yeah. did the thing. Um, but what I don't like is best friends coming to save some old Joe. Don't like that shit. Not one uh. fucking bit. Don't <laughs> like that shit. Absolutely not. Keep keep Samoa, keep the best friends away from Samoa Joe. Throw him back in whatever fucking closet you had him uh, had him in. Just Orange Cassidy can't perform right now. Do not have no motherfuckers around Samoa Joe, bro. Literally anybody else. I I, I can't even say that for real. But uh, just keep best friends away from him, please, bro. Why not get some ROH people or some ROH tag team to be by his side? Why couldn't y'all pick FTR or some shit? FTR got other things they got to worry about. They got to worry about Rapunky yeah, Vice. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs>
fucking terrible whatever. Um, but the match was fine. I liked it. Um, another match that I uh, really liked a lot uh, in the Soul and Heart tournament was Kyle O'Reilly versus uh, Ray Phoenix. Um, I liked it too. I, you know, we say a lot of things about Kyle O'Reilly. We ain't, we ain't never did. We ain't never say he couldn't get it done in the ring. Maybe he could have get it done, you know, kind of getting the, uh, Von Wagner over. But who the fuck could? <laughs> That's an impossible goddamn task. But um, him and Ray Phoenix, I thought they killed it. There's a couple of spots that I thought was stupid, but of course they're Ray Phoenix. It's a Ray, spot, it's a Ray so. Phoenix match. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a, you know, there was one point that the Hurricane Rana where he ran off the ropes and then Kyle O'Reilly just kind of stood there and waited for it. I mm-hmm. could have done without that. But besides that, I thought the match was really good. Um, couple things. I don't. I hate Kyle's music. I hate that music. What is that? That's terrible. Uh, cl- cl- classic R.O.H. theme, bro. That's just ass. Um, <laughs> that shit Ray, Phoenix, Ray, Ray Phoenix's uh, new entrance is cool. I like the the um the just position of uh, Pentagon Oscuro. Yeah, you know, it's, it's basic, but it's mm-hmm. cool. It's a cool little dynamic between the, the brothers. Um, I mean, well, I like it. Anything else happened in the match? I'm trying to remember. I just watched it. I forgot that fast. That's crazy. Um, I don't remember any other real spots besides the the uh, the Hurricane Ronda spot. But it was cool. Good match. Good. I would go out of my way to watch that one. Those those the two, the first two Owen Hart matches we discussed. You can go out of your way to watch those. The next two Owen Hart matches. Yeah. Absolutely, skip the fuck out these shit, boy. We got Britt oh, Baker versus Maki Ito. Owen is ro- rolling in his grave as we speak. Um, Maki Ito was the Joker for the women's Owen Hart only only Owen only women's Owen Hart match. Um, I'm gonna I'm give you the rundown of this match. Britt Baker comes out, Maki Ito comes out. I uh, do a little comedy spot where it looks like she's gonna you know take the fall, Maki Ito, and then she tricks her into it and plays possum, gets a little roll up. Some dumb shit happens. Terrible, and, terrible cradle. Terrible, terrible cradle. And then commercial break. Uh, we come back from commercial break <laughs> and maybe two more spots and then we get right to the finish. And that was the match. Mm-hmm. Britt Baker falling from grace. Can't get more than like eight minutes on TV. Yeah, um, this match was a thing that happened. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, you I know don't really have to speak. What's that? I do like Makita. I really do. And I think it sucks that Britt Baker dragged her down because now motherfuckers really talking crazy on Twitter. But talking about your girl. But motherfucker, I saw what they saw. I can't defend that shit neither. Shit was that didn't look good. Mm-hmm. Bad look. Don't All come right. back to AEW, man. <laughs> um, the next nice. match, made the main event for the night. Jeff Hardy versus Adam Cole. Um, clearly, they were pressed for time because we didn't get the Adam Cole entrance. We didn't get the Adam Cole entrance that we usually get because you know they love to do that one. Um, mm-hmm. Jeff, he attacks Jeff Hardy early. We get a couple spots, and once again, straight to commercial. <laughs> and then we come back from commercial, and I couldn't nah, really tell you anything wait. that happened. This shit's crazy because they do the entrances, they come back from commercial. They do a hot start. They can't even get entrances in. Two, like, we just came back from commercial break, bro. They hit us with another one. I said, yo, it is like 9.57, bro. How much <laughs> more time of this match we got left? And they come, uh, you know, we come back from commercial break. And then once again, AEW, just get, like, I don't know if y'all noticed yet, but Tony Schiavone just be like, Keep saying, or uh, you know, commentary periods be like, "Oh, we're gonna stick with this as long as it takes," as if they're gonna go past ten o'clock. No, soon as soon as that shit sniffed nine fifty nine, that shit was done. Well, then they did the, they did the uh, WCW finish and had everybody yeah. come out fighting, and then we ran out of time, which you know is the Tony yeah. the Tony Schiavone uh, catchphrase. But um, yeah, at, after at the match, ten. 10.02. The shit was over. That is the latest after, AEW stays on. After the match, um, Sting, the Young Bucks, Darby Allen, big old fracas happens out in the ring. 
um, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, all of them. And then it's just a big old brawl. And then it went off the air. And that was the end of AEW. Terrible match. Terrible botched uh, super kick wh- whisper in the wind. We got to have a discussion about Jeff Hardy. Um, it's time. Hang it up. Hang it up. Flat screen. Flat screen. No, nah, we need that, that, we need that sound clip. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. No, nah, man. Match was very stinky. I ain't like that shit one bit. Um. Nor am I like really excited for possibly seeing Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole in the finals. Is that um, what we're leading to? You think that's what it's gonna be? That's very stinky to me. I don't like that. That doesn't uh that doesn't excite me. That doesn't uh make me go, ooh, they're gonna do what they couldn't do in WWE. Or, like, what is what is really the purpose of these two going at it going at it? I think they like having tag team partners go at it in this in this company. Like, why why couldn't it be them in the qualifier like they did with fucking Dax and uh uh Dax and Cash, like why? Oh. Why had why it had to be the two teams that people care significantly less for? I think I'd rather see Adam Cole versus Ray Phoenix anyway. Oh, not Ray Phoenix. I'm sorry. Um, Ray Phoenix is out. Damn. So I guess yeah, it has to be a. Uh, yeah, it could be Joe. Oh, it could right be on. Joe. They they might do Joe. Come on now. They might do Joe. Do they want to have Joe. two heels in the final? I mean, shit. Motherfucker, we about to get CM Punk versus uh Hey Man Page. That's two faces. I know, but the alignment don't but, matter. But two faces, you can you can work alignment, two faces. Work, alignment work it. does alignment does not matter. I will say in AEW alignment doesn't really matter. I agree with you there. So uh, yeah, I guess you're, I guess it's fine. Whatever. It, it, it is what it is. Um, um but, uh, not too excited about any of our possible uh, final competitors here. Um, wait, who is Adam Cole? Adam Cole's to the finals, right? Wait, who's Adam who's Cole's in the now? finals? He, he made it to the finals, so he faces the winner between Samoa Joe and um, Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, okay. Sorry, his side of the bracket is yeah, further it's, along. It's done. Sorry. Yeah. Um, motherfucker, I ain't trying to see Adam Cole versus Samoa Joe. Come on now. I don't want to see Adam Cole versus anybody, but we're here. Yeah. <laughs> so we're stuck with that. But that is all our Owen Hart stuff. Um, just one half is really decent and the other half is hella stinky. But a really good fucking match. My match of the night for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's Hangman Page versus uh, Takashita. Takeshita. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Oh, okay. I'm not even gonna try Kinos- to pronounce K- the first one. Konosuke Sh- Takeshita. Takeshita. Okay. I didn't hear commentary saying I doubt Jim Ross even tried <laughs> to pronounce that. <laughs> Jim Ross ain't trying. He ain't trying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this match is really good. My only thing. My only thing is, and this is a gripe. I still think this match is fantastic. This absolutely takes. Nothing away from the match. Well, probably like two little nitpicks. This match is really fucking good. But why is Hangman Page going like a fit, like a 50 50, like a 50 50 <laughs> against a motherfucker? We have no idea who the fuck he is. I believe this is only his third. The second, this is his second match on AEW, if I'm not mistaken. I'm no video, no video package for brother, you know. Excalibur yeah. gave us the quick lowdown, but I don't think that was sufficient enough. He did have a match against um, Jay Lethal on Rampage, I believe, two weeks ago. But um, that's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> I like, think they probably they probably should did a better job of explaining who Takesh did. I think I'm, during commentary they did go over his history and you know who he they was tried. trained by yeah. Tenru and all that. But I think just for more casual of a fan not even i mean you don't, i wouldn't even say casual i think most people don't i would imagine most american wrestling fans don't really know who people who are like tenru are so i feel I, like i understand like when i hear the name like okay that's cool 
but it, it don't click. You know, that yeah. that like to to me is just like, oh, he's trained by like a legend. Yeah. But like, is he good though? Yeah, why should we care? Yeah, like why like not not saying like why should we care that he's trained by you, you know, like that's a no, why big should, deal. Why should like, we care about this guy? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, is he good though? Like, is he yeah. nice? Like, does he have any championships? Like, you know, who is he aligned with? Like, where is he from? Like, you know, any accolades? Like, a, a, what a, a, any accolades package. or championships that this nigga got? Like, you know, yeah. Um, so, that, and there is one part of the match where I was just like, okay, I get it. He's nice. But let's dial it the fuck back. Like, I think he was kind of getting a little too much off on Hangman Page and a little bit of that last three minutes. Like, he was, uh, when they go to the top rope and he does, like, the clothesline joint. I hate that spot. <laughs> cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Did not need to happen. The match should have been over, you know, a while ago. I, I think it should have it should have ended after the pile driver or some shit. But I was just like, nah, like, you like you're really nice, but you shouldn't be taking hangman to like even though it wasn't like the limit, but like he was really taking it to him. Let's tone that the fuck down for the rematch at some point <laughs> in time, you know. Like say save it, you know, save it for the next time, you know. So I, um, I asked um what's up with him? It, like if they're gonna have him wrestle a match like that with hangman, is he sticking around for a while? I believe he is on excursion from DDT, so at least for a year he will be in AW. I bet not see this man on dark next week. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, like this motherfucker's nice, man. I really yeah, like th- I really fuck with the kid, bro. Um yeah. He 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 nice with it. Um one thing that I don't like, um, it doesn't reflect the match at all, but CM Punk trying to sell his championship match with uh Hangman on commentary, boring. You thought, you thought I, I thought it was boring. Because he was just like, you know, because the only interaction or anything. Or like any animosity or any, anything that was really trying to sell the match was just like, oh man, Hangman keeps looking at me over here. Oh mm-hmm. man, Hangman keeps looking at me over here. He need to focus, man. Hangman keeps looking at me. Oh, he did my finisher. I'm in his head, man. I got him. And I was just like, is, 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 is that is, is that is that what gonna get niggas to really buy this pay per view? I think it's tough to um, try to get shit over when there's three other people talking <laughs> at the table. You can only say that's so why. That, that's why I'm just like, have the face off, have the promo battle, have the brawl, have the. That's next shit. week. I think. I think all that happens next week. The pro, the face off promo battle into the fight is going to happen next. I week. don't. I don't think it should be all crammed into next week. Because this build has been. Oh. Uh, what is it? CM Punk. He 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 did the shit on his waist. Hey man, looked at him. CM Punk gone. Hangman throwing subs. They face to face. He ain't do shit. Mm. You was just talking shit about the nigga two weeks ago. He in your face, and all you could do is just shrug past him. You want more animosity between the two people? Like I want like. This nigga fired up, but he not showing me that. For, like he not showing me that his fire could burn somebody. Yeah, there, you know what? It is? There's no real hatred between these two guys. It feels like it's more just a, a competitive. I'm better than you. Type it, it, is it competitive? I don't know. Because I'm no, not seeing I'm, Punk trying to do. I'm not. Try, I'm not seeing Punk trying to do a fucking dead eye or a buckshot lariat. He did. He did one last week. You might have missed. He it did a dead eye. That. He did the uh, buckshot last week against John Silver. For real? Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to see him. You didn't watch it because you you were out of town. So. Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely. <laughs> there was yeah. What is it? Wednesday? I just landed. Yeah. Uh, think, <laughs> yeah, he did. He did do the um the the uh, buckshot. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're trying to one cool up though. each other. Yeah. I don't know. There needs there needs to be some more animosity here. Um, we were talking to Meals earlier, and he was just like, "I feel like Heyman is gonna win, um, the match," and I'm like, "That's fine." If they get the run back, if Punk gets the run back, like if if Hangman goes like full heel, even though I don't even know what a a heel Hangman looks at looks like in his current iteration, um, you know he does some slimy shit at the pay per view and then they run it back. 
I guess I don't I don't even know when they will run it back. Like I guess like a couple weeks after the pay-per-view, or they do that weird shit where they do it like two weeks later on a random do, fucking dynamite. They they can have like a special episode of dynamite. They'll probably have like a whatever, one of those little things they do. Uh, uh what them joys call like, like the beach break or whatever. Or like a fight for the following or some shit. Yeah, they already did, shows. they already did beach break and they got dead of fucking winter in, in Cleveland. <laughs> Fucking dumbasses, bro. <laughs> but um, nah, I, I I really I really want like I want this to have as much fire as the MJF and Warlow shit. And I know that's been going on a lot longer, but I just feel like you know it could it could be that it could be an, it could be it as intense as that without mm-hmm. all the stupid you know stipulations and meaningless matches in between. Um, and then speaking of MJF and Warlow, I thought this segment was short, sweet, and kind of perfect. Got um, to the point. That's all. It was literally what we wanted. That's all, that's all it was. A- MJF didn't do his, uh, you know, his little taunting stick for too long. Um, Warlow came out, took his lashes. They did some more dickhead shit, beat his ass. Done. I think. I think at this point. In the few they've reached like peak heat, I don't think it can go any further than where it's at now. Yeah, so I don't think there, there's no need to take it any further. You know what I mean? Let's just get it out the way. Mm-hmm. We got one more one more week of this, and then we get to the pay per view. So, kudos to them for not for not overdoing it. Perfectly Perfect. fine to me. Perfect. Yeah, Good job. love it. Uh, fantastic <laughs> stuff, y'all boys. Uh, quick hits now. We got Keith Lee and Swerve um, defeating the Horsemen. The literally nobodies um i blinked and the match was over um they talked some shit keith lee speaks uh so we're in the top five now top five tag team yeah top five tag team and you know what being a top five tag team gets you when you're at fifth place you know what that gets you that gets you a tag team op- a tag team uh championship opportunity when you are at number five Hey, long, long, long as you're in, long as you're in the top number five, five. That's all that matters. Number five, not number, not number one. Don't be, don't be, a, don't, don't be top one contender. You ain't never seeing that championship match. But top five, do you, though. Do you want to hear the top five tag team division right now? Please let. What is it? Please let Ricky Starks and Hobbs be number one. FTR is number one, which makes sense. Jesus Christ. Hobbs and Starks is number two. Guess what number three is. Who actually rose up? The acclaim, Gun Club. Fuck. Oh man, that would have been a great okay. guess. Number four is John Silver and Alex Reynolds. I did, I haven't seen these guys tag team in like six months. And the fifth is Brian Danielson and John Moxley. This is from May 11th, so next week okay. to, tomorrow so, will be a different ranking. But so Swerve and Keith just knocked off Combat Club. Or John Silver and Alex Reynolds. I don't know either one. One of those two. I don't know how the rankings work. But yeah, that's um the tag team ranking. So yeah, we don't know how these <laughs> rankings work. That's the damn show. Um, whatever, man. Uh, so Christian comes out, kind of st- uh, stinks it up, and it's gonna be Jurassic Express versus Team Taz. Are they even called Team Taz anymore? Um, yeah, I guess so. Team Taz versus Keith and, uh, Keith and Swerve. And then there's going to be a title, uh, a, title, uh, a title match for the FTW, FTW title with Jungle Boy, Swerve, and Ricky Starks. Now, Christian coming out and just announcing two championship matches like he owned this bitch, crazy. Also, I don't care about either of these matches. So good luck, y'all boys. I think I think the, the triple threat tag match is going to be good. I I I'd like that. I think I think the triple threat singles match is going to be better. We'll see. We you don't like those multi man tag matches though, so I feel you. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> um, because I I think I think Ricky Starks and Swerve could do some really cool shit, and Jungle Boy is decent. Uh, at at some points in time, um, let's see if those you know. Those two guys couldn't fucking carry him, but it is what it is. Bitch. <laughs> um, we yeah. got Rapungi Vice challenging uh 
what is it? Everybody that has a tag title. So, okay. There's a reason <laughs> why the title, there's a reason why the title was eluding y'all too. Fucking garbage. Well, they're um, back full time now. They're back to, they're back together for good. They were going for the Tony, Ring of Honor Tag Championship. I'm so I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Tony Khan really hate my ass. Bringing, <laughs> uh, bringing back these two motherfuckers full time. Um, next segment, two terrible segments back to back. I swear Ooh, to God, wait. yo, if you want to tank a show, put the like. This brought like the quality of the show, like All right. anchor. So, so let's preface this from from eight from eight p.m. when it started to nine twenty p.m. Fine show. This is a fine weekly episode. Fine episode of Dynamite. As soon as Chris Jericho came out, this show went downhill immediately and never came back. Mm-mm. Playing, crash. it was impossible Ugly. for it to do so. Yeah, the momentum dropped completely on this episode of uh, you get Dynamite. this, the Britt Baker versus Monty Ito shit, the Serena, Serena D shit <laughs> to the main event. Acts, <laughs> was terrible. All of it was terrible. Nothing could sink faster than that shit, boy. So, we got the Combat Club coming out, and they're waiting to have, like, a face-off or whatever with uh, Chris Jericho and his groupies. And then Jericho, can the fruit hang any fucking lower? (laughs) Like, all the substance abuse lines? Terrible in front of John Moxley, who just came back from fucking uh, uh what it uh, was, you know, rehab. Are you fucking insane? I mean, I and don't no- care about like offensive stuff, it's just like it's just blame. Like, why who cares? Why are we doing this? Let no some, substance let's... behind it, like, yeah, it's boo, it was boring. Like, I it's guess the stuff, they it's the have... stuff we complain about MGF doing when he used to do it. Exactly. I'm happy he, st- he stopped doing it, yeah. And for, for Chris Jericho to be doing this. How far are you fucking falling, bruh? Like, I know that they probably had some history in the WWF, some shit in passing, but they was picking at fucking, like, teeth trying to Ooh, pick Jericho some form of... Yeah. They are beefing for a long time. Jericho, they had I a WrestleMania like, match. I was just like, this shit is fucking nuts, bruh. Um, Jericho kind of just goes down the line talking shit about everybody that's in the ring, which would be uh, LAX, uh, Kingston, Combat Club, minus Will, uh, Willer Yuta, who's in the best of Super Juniors right now. He can't say jack shit. He don't say jack shit about... Uh, he don't say... He can't say shit about Brian Danielson. I feel like that's where that shit... Uh, the promo where, where it really goes downhill. I say the yeah, promo goes it. downhill when... Uh, Regal started talking it went downhill, honestly. When... um. When Garcia started talking, I was just like, man, this shit is terrible. Um, I don't know, man. All that substance abuse shit, you know, all that low-hanging fruit was fucking terrible. And John Mosley gra- uh, grabs the mic. No, well, Jericho is trying to, like, save the stipulation for the match, whatever they plan on having. No, and John Jericho wanted to stay the stampede, and John, John Mosley was John like, John no said, ah, <laughs> fuck that shit. We ain't doing nah, that bullshit. fuck that. I want violence. I want skulls. I want to uh, pull your teeth out. I want blood. Da da da. You want to have a match? You could call it whatever you like. Blah blah blah. Then what the fuck? Um, I don't know who speaks on the mic after that, but Eddie Kingston is fucking jogging back and forth, swagless ass. And then he's just like. Oh no, nah, fuck that. I want to fight right now. Blah blah blah. Just whatever. And Brian Daniels is like, nah, let's let's not do that right now. And then the segment's over. No match, no match announced. So what the <laughs> fuck y'all about to have? Y'all gonna have the stadium that beat or not? Or is it blood and guts or what is it? What, what are we doing? Um I, maybe they did announce it. I don't know. I might have missed it, but no, they did not. Oh, okay. Not a 10 man. Not a five, like not a uh, you know, a 10 man tag, not no trio shit. But 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 fucking uh Kingston got a problem with fucking uh with uh, uh with Danielson because he told him not to go fight him because he don't want to get his ass beat again. What type of fucking segment was this? Uh 10 minutes too long, I'll tell you that much. Um and then after the match, 
their little backstage promo with Matt Sidell and Dante Martin calling out a uh, backpool combat club. So they're about the job real quick. Um, and I, I and I don't know why. Why the fuck you ain't call out the heels? What the, fuck, what the fuck? Dante <laughs> Martin talking tough <tofu>? for? <laughs> and Matt Sidell got the softest voice in the fucking world, bro. Like he's why, always like, he's, he's always had that. He's always had that. Yeah, though. I That's know. So funny. <laughs> it's just like, why are you talking shit like that? Fucking weird. Um, but nah, that segment was terrible. And it then, got worse. Yeah, then we got a, a fucking <laughs> even worse segment coming up with Serena D. Uh, what is it? Tony Schiavone is in the ring. Gonna talk to somebody. Who knows who? And then fucking Serena D. comes out doing her little Karen walk. Uh, you know, her little Eddie Kingston walk. And then she was just like, I heard what you said about me last week. You 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 said I could have beat Thunder Rosa. I shaved my head bald. I I turned the I I put the promo on mute at some point. So whatever she said, I didn't care because she it was she was stumbling on her words. No, no. It, it, it she was, was stumbling on promo. her words. You could tell you could kind of tell she had a script because whenever the crowd would fuck up, whenever the crowd would fuck up, like she'll talk like that, like. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's just like, you know, she'll start her line, get flustered by the crowd, and then start out, like, start the sentence over. And it's just like, oh my God, like, oh, the, the, the notes on the, uh, the notes on your hand, man. Yeah. And then she was I, just like, oh man, uh, D- Dustin, you come out here too. You know me. And you said I couldn't beat Thunder Rosa. <laughs> that was the point where I turned it off. I, I was like, I don't care anymore about this stupid. Promo. Boy, I got this my titties done terrible. and shaved my head. Is that what she said? To... Yes. She said, I got <laughs> my titties done, shave my head. I paid my dues. And the crowd was just like, What? <laughs> Nigga, how you throw a how you throw a sub at fucking public public enemy number one, Johnny Ace and Vince McMahon, and you do not get a positive reaction. Especially, especially this past week with everything that happened I'm with the uh, bro. You couldn't get niggas don't give a <laughs> shit. You couldn't, you couldn't even get uh, the cheap pop for the, the WWE disc? Yeah. We could do it. Her and Thunder Rosa can't get no pops for that. And then Thunder Rosa comes out for some fucking reason trying to, uh, you know, let me at him, let me at him. And I was just like, what kind of, like, relationship, like, the, re- the relationship between Thunder Rosa and uh, Dustin hasn't truly been established in my eyes. So, I, I think a little bit on Rampage, maybe. It has been. Let's I get into NXT. Have... Let's get into NXT, man. <laughs> Don't, don't hit me with the put on rampage. Nah, we good. We off it's canon. that. It's, it's canon. It's, it's canon. <laughs> what, you, what you mean? Nah, the segment was terrible, bro. Stop giving Serena Dean and Thunder Rosa a mic. Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get into NXT 2.0. Lash Legend, congratulations on your victory tonight over Tatum Paxley. You're now advancing to the semifinals of the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament, but what would it mean to you to win it all? First of all, Tatum Paxley can't match my energy in the ring, but I don't blame her because no woman can. But what Tatum did do, she led me to the path to winning the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament. And then after that, I'm coming for the Women's NXT Championship, where I become the main attraction at end. NXT. All right, man. NXT 2.0. Uh, we started the show pretty uh pretty well. Um, we got Grimes, Soya Sokoa versus Trick Williams and uh, Carmelo Hayes, and I thought this match was really good. A question I wanted to ask you though: Is Trick Williams getting better? No. Okay. I watched I watched the match he had on uh level up last week. It wasn't good. Um no, yeah, I'm 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 losing I'm losing face for my brother. I, I, th- I think he was just in the ring with three other very uh, decent to good guys, so it kind of covered up for him. Honestly, I think after whatever Carmelo, I'm assuming Carmelo loses that in your house. I wouldn't mind if the, if those two went for the tag belts, uh Carmelo and Trick. That'd be cool, I think. For just to give him something to do. Wait, you want them to what? Be tag tag? Yeah, I want them to tag. Nah, man, Triple even stink, bro. Um, I'm not gonna say stink. Also, um, <clears throat> I will tell you my problem with this match. 
I don't like Carmella getting pinned. Yeah, I don't like. Why are we having the contender get pinned before the match at In Your House? And then they do it again later on the show, and I was just like, "Are you boys insane?" Yeah, I don't understand the logic behind doing that, making Carmella look weaker going into the match. It almost feels like Carmella's become an afterthought in this in the storyline. It's more about uh, so it's a crime one. Yeah, it's okay. like the whole thing is I got next. Like we're already looking past whatever the yeah. hell gonna happen with Grimes, and, like and, like, uh, like with Santos and uh, uh, Braun Breaker. Yeah, it's a, it's the same situation again. Where like we're already looking forward to the next thing, so whatever going on right now doesn't even matter. We know what the result's gonna be. Yeah, I'm just like, hey man, wrap this up, man. Uh, Sean, I- Sean, man, I don't know. What are we doing? <laughs> Let my boy go. Let my boy Carmelo go up, bro. Let no, him go I, up I or let him do something else, think, man. I don't think he's ready. I don't think he he's still. I, you missed it. I don't. Well, me when me and Mills talked about it last week. There's mm-hmm. something missing. There. There's something missing there with Carmelo. He's not fully fleshed out yet. Every every honestly, gotta, gotta ever since it. he lost that, ever since he lost that championship, it's been looking bleak. And if you can't yeah. survive without a championship, come on, man. Come on, man. You're gonna have the, have the Charlotte problem. Yeah. But well, um, you're not going to get the belt as much as Charlotte does, so. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really you know what's funny is that y'all compared him to MVP, and that boy was getting mad love from MVP at Wale Mania. So that boy looked into the future. <laughs> I still think I, still, I compare him to Shawn Michaels more than MVP. I think he's very Shawn Michaels-esque. Obviously mm-hmm. not to the you know the complete full on nineties yeah zestiness and whatever the hell Shawn Michaels was doing, but you know you know oh, what yeah, I mean. Man. Nah, I hear you. Um, but nah, it's not looking too great for my boy right now. Um, let's get into this breakout, uh, the women's breakout tournament stuff, man. Some really good stuff. Um, Tatum Paxley versus Last Legend. I think Last Legend is looking better over time. He's a um, I agree. Tatum Paxley, I think she is good, you know, uh, from the stuff that I've seen um, from Level Up. Not not any full matches or anything, but, you know, gifts and stuff that I've seen. The only thing with this match that really puzzled me is why the, the electric fuck chair? she keep yeah, – Why the fuck was she kept yeah. going for the electric chair? Commentary, help me out. Is this her finisher? Is this, like, the setup for her finisher? That, that's trying the thing. to go I don't for a even... one-wing angel. Like, I don't even think that's her finisher. That's the thing I'm confused about. I don't really know what her finisher is, but I don't believe it's an electric chair. So what are we doing? Why do you keep trying to trying to do the move? That made shit zero made sense. her yeah, made, made her look very dumb in my eyes. Cause I was just like, w- by the second time, you could have should have been like, Well, damn, last legend a big motherfucker. Maybe I should do something <laughs> else. Yeah. Like, what? Come on now. Uh very much uh lost to a stupid mistake. So, uh, Last Legend advances, and I would say this, not, if the finals for this is Last Legends versus Nikita 3, I don't really like that we had a whole tournament to do this. I felt like y'all could have just had, you know, two other women in this while they still continued to feud. And just beat each other asses like week in and week out rather than, you know, kind of just, you know, forfeit um, the final storm. So I mean, this, well, is the, this is the thing. Give though, them the right? accolade, but this is the thing, though, right? Well, two things. I think one, Nikita winning that women's belt sooner than later. I, I think it's going to happen pretty soon. Uh, two, the good thing about the breakout tournament, at least the, the other men's ones, is that a lot of the, a lot of the girls we saw. The gimmick they had during the breakout tournament, they're probably not going to have in uh, the next no. time we see okay. them. Okay, yeah. You We're know what I mean? About Remember, one of these motherfuckers. Yeah, like one <laughs> of these. So I think it's fine that the girls are going through for the most part. It doesn't really matter. The only, the only girls that really matter in this tournament are um, Roxanne, Nikita, and Lash. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind them go running through the tournament again. Um, it is what it is. I think Nikita wins the whole thing, and I think she's going to beat Mandy. I think she's going to be the one to beat Mandy. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't know. Maybe if they give it some time, 
honestly, I'm ready for anybody to take it off Mandy. So uh, yeah. it don't really bother me. I think I I think it might be a little too early, but it's been oh, a little definitely. too long. It, it's been a little too long for Mandy. So I guess it cancels out. All right. Excuse me. Next, we got Roxanne Perez ver- versus uh, Kenan James. Uh, Kiana James. Kiana James. Hey, man. Get better gear. Thank you. Man, Yo, Ms. James. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, you like, know, when you go to like uh, Party City or like um, Spirit mm-hmm. Halloween and you, and you look at the uh, costume little package? That's literally what she looked like. She, like sexy, ac- sexy accountant Halloween costume. Yeah, ch- uh, ch- <laughs> ch- ch- cheap ass shit, man. Get some better gear. It, did, it didn't look good. The gimmick, I don't with, understand with, it. With, uh, with the 3D glasses with the lens popped out? Come on, bro. You got to do better than that. Yeah, um, the gimmick, yeah, this, is, this was not good. You know, this, this reminded me of old NXT. It's some shit I was seeing, like the old 2012 but like, NXT. It, it, but if you, you know, buy the numbers, chick, dress like you buy the numbers. Or'd you like, get a better what, gimmick? That gimmick is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> the, the about gimmick's numbers? terrible. What is this, money the, ball? Yeah, she was just like, man, <laughs> by my calculations, I'm about to really whoop your ass. And then it was just, oh, come on, man. I forgot to carry the one, man. Yeah, um, right. And I was willing to ignore all of that if she was really good in this match, and she wasn't. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. Ro- also, Roxanne uh, did what she could. Yeah. Roxanne's a star. I think she she got. I see the vision with Roxanne. I'm 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 I looking forward to what they do with her. Um, speaking her, of her, the, her and okay. Cora Jade, I'm seeing it. Cora, I'm still kind of iffy. Roxanne, I see it though. Um, okay. Speaking of um. Young women, I didn't put it in the docket, but that little that promo, oh, I forgot the young lady's name. Shorty's still in high school. <laughs> Wild in. That? That's Wild I don't think she said she's still gonna get her education, so that's fire. Yeah, they let they go to college too. I think that's really cool. I'm probably probably gonna go to full sale. <laughs> That'd be crazy. The Chad Gable did it, so I, I mean I don't see why not. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's really interesting having just a girl who's in high school. That's a lot of responsibility for somebody in high school, but hey, <laughs> NBA players do it. 18 fresh out. They so I mean it's possible. The best of luck to her. I hope she sticks it out. And if she does it, if she wants if she wants to try something else, she's young, she's 18. Um mm-hmm. just that's it's a <sighs> wrestling is so weird because of like the culture of it, but I don't know what NXT is like now, but I couldn't imagine 10 years ago, an 18-year-old going in there. 18-year-old woman? Absolutely not. No. Oh, boy. Yeah, with, with, motherf- with, with motherfuckers like Randy Orton around? Yeah, just, no. Just, so, it's interesting. It, it, it shows how much the culture changed in, in WWE and NXT specifically that you can even have a high mm-hmm. school girl in the company She's like, I'm and graduating while, next week. That's crazy. Yeah, while while like while attending college, um, yeah, high school. She's still sh- in high school. Or yeah, she but she will be attending college. I fucking hope. Um, yeah. Nah, that's cool. She graduates next week. Um, I think it was cool that they they gave her that little video package because I don't think she'll be debuting anytime soon. But just a face to remember, man. Where is uh, Simone? Where's hey, Simone? Let, 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 let's ask a, a, a better question. What if Simone's ass? What if she's just I'm, not fired? What if she's just not fired? I mean, she's been injured this whole time, so I, I doubt she's even had time to really train like that. I'm just saying, we ain't had a peep from her since that interview she had with Renee three years ago. What is it? She, she, she got like, uh, what is it? She got like three, uh, three, three surgeries so far? I heard the third one was that it was like she called it out and said that's not true. So, oh, okay. But it was definitely two. It was two at minimum. I know that much. Crazy. Um, I'm not going to worry about her. She got, she got big shoes to fill. And I don't think they're going to get filled. Ugh. Yeah, that's rough. Like, they, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's funny too. You can't even like hide it because she looked just like that nigga. 
She looked just like yeah. him. Uh, you couldn't even pretend they, like that wasn't good. They, 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 they can't pull the Braun Breaker shit while like, yeah, not no. calling them like Steiner or whatever. No, so you know exactly who with, that is. They better go with the Simone Maivia and then, you know, give her the fucking world, bro. Yeah, they, they at least try to. They got to go with something Maivia. It has to be something Maivia. It's only right. I think it'd be cool. Um, be cool. But nah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not too interested in where she's at current. Um, Cause I, I feel like when she comes, like it's kind of going to be like, you know, kind of like a takeover thing with like, uh, with like Braun Breaker, where it's just like, you know, le- le- legacy over everything, bro. Move aside, man. It's rock daughter, nigga. So, yeah. We'll see what happens there. But moving on, we got Viking Raiders versus the Creed Bros. And once again, did it again a really man. good match. They did it again. Really good- they did it again. Crazy stuff. How is this not the main event? Blows my mind. But um, I like the main event this week, by the way. I'm just... We'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> Ro- uh, Roger Strong trying to run the gam- tried to run the gambit again was crazy because I he really came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that boy came really out did. of fucking nowhere, bro. That just spooked the fuck out of me. I thought a fan ran in, bro. <laughs> bro, um, before before that though, Brutus Creed. I don't know how that man is standing up today. Mm-hmm. He did that. He did that cannonball, and, and the Viking Raider did not catch him at all. That no, man landed feet, knees, ankles first directly onto that concrete. I know that shit hurt when after after the match was over. I know after that adrenaline ran off. I know his legs was killing him. That that's what working out is for, bro. You endure that pain. Yeah, I know that motherfucker hurting though. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, I believe Brutus isn't that in that old. So you know he probably can recover pretty fast. I believe he is Creed Brothers. And I don't even know their ages. Couldn't even tell you, but there's no way they're older than like 25. So he'll be all right. But that when it, I was just like, ow. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. You know, it's, it's, it's just four big guys beating each other up. Four crazy white boys. Going dummy, doing, bro. Doing crazy white boy stuff. And I, you know, fire. I love it. What, what can um, I say? Post-match angle. It's more drama between Diamond Mine. And um, I think it just ends with Roderick Strong and Damian Kemp. That's his name, yeah, right? They're wrestling pretty deadly uh, next week. Kind of crazy, but uh, I think the match should be cool. Um, not to, uh, Fit Watch, pretty deadly outfits are wasn't getting worse. They wasn't hitting yeah, this week. They're, they're, they're getting worse, man. You you they're can't find pack- the, uh, you, you can't find the Forever Twenty One man. Zara, you can't find the Zara. Can't find a Zara man. <laughs> they know Zara. Oh, is, uh, the, nah, <laughs> the, the the fit the fits this week was very weak. Yeah, um, I wasn't feeling the fits this week. Come, come, come through to Miami, man. They are gonna get you right. <laughs> right. Um, nah, that should be fun. That should be cool. Uh, hopefully, Damian uh Kemp is good or has gotten better since the last time I saw him. So he was on UK last week. He wrestled. Who did he wrestle? I believe he wrestled. Was this Sam Gradwell? Who did he wrestle? Real oh quick. boy, he I'm does. not watching that match. <laughs> <laughs> no. Who did that? I do, two week, was I it do. two weeks ago? I don't oh, like he wrestled, Sam Gradwell. He, he wrestled uh Danny Jones, the most generic name in wrestling. Who the fuck? Um, <laughs> this guy was he's just jobs on NXT UK. Okay. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. The men's stuff on NXT UK that, that doesn't feature their champions, I don't watch. You don't watch it? Um, I don't watch. I, I, I like, I'm sorry. Well, now their best guys, are, I think Devlin's gone. Also, that match, Devlin and, um, Devlin and, uh, Dragonoff match the year contender easily. That match was a banger. Um, honestly, but, he might be my rest of the year again. Yeah, it's looking like it. Devlin, Devlin's gone. Nathan Frazier just left. Um, yeah, I guess it's just kind of Tyler May and Tur Seven are a tag team, so you're yeah, right. The guys is kind of it ain't really hitting over there for the guys. I don't yeah. know. A match that I really uh, a match that I need to go back and see is uh, I don't don't tell me if you like it or not, but I want to see Isla Dawn versus Mako Sadamore. You don't want don't me to tell you. Don't, if tell you me, like don't, 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 don't tell me if you like it or not. 
Okay. If you say because if you say it's buns, I'm it's good. It wasn't. Not no, it, okay. It, it wasn't. It was good. It was good. It was I good. like um, she's really growing on me. Like for real. No, for this, real. I like I this, don't know all that. This one was much better than the first one. This one was way better than the first one. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I miss Valkyrie so fucking much, man. She was really my she was really my favorite on NXT UK. But let's let's get back into a uh, 2.0 here. Um so we get a lot of vignettes between uh gang warfare, you know, just trying to uh settle this a mano a mano. Uh we got Santos Escobar versus um Tony D'Angelo. And let me tell you. My eyes have never shut faster. Really? Than when I, when these motherfuckers started to uh when these motherfuckers started wrestling, bro. I couldn't stay awake for this one. I liked it. I really liked it. I, I'm not gonna say I really liked it. I liked the match though. I thought this was one of Tony D'Angelo's better efforts. I think him and Santos surprisingly have good chemistry. Um nothing Is like it, and it's is the NXT made? Do do you think that the main event streak is is on, or you might need to reset it? I gave it a three point two five out of five, which is fine by me. So I gave I gave I gave Core and Natalia three point two five last week. So, for what it's worth, mm-hmm. no, no, man. And then before that, before for spring break, I gave jo- I gave uh, Joe Gacy and Braun Breaker a three. So it's been around the three area these last couple weeks. I don't know, man. As soon as that match started, started snoozing, boy. Um, I don't know. I'll peep it. I'll see if it's good or not. Or, you know, by my standard. I'll tweet if it has to be reset. <laughs> but let's get into these quick hits, man. Ron Breaker and Joe Yacy are still talking to one another, and I do not give a shit, bro. Don't give a damn about this feud. I want this over with next week or whatever. I mean, yeah. not next week, two weeks from now. I want it done. I don't ever, I don't ever see these guys talk to each other ever again. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I really don't want to talk about Joe Gacy no more, man. Um, Indy Hartwell is solo dolo, and she said, Mandy, I'm tired of you talking shit. Mm. So let's ho- ho- hopefully uh, Indy Hartwell brings it to her. And if she don't win, hopefully she can go up or something. Um, Because I think it'd be crazy. It'd be crazy in NXT with her still around after she takes a massive loss like that. Um, Waller versus Andre Chase. I thought the match was really good. Um, Yeah, I think uh, just two competitors that just do really good shit, man. I like the dynamic of Stratton and Waller. I think that's fun. Mm-hmm. I don't I know if they're the, going. I, I love Saray and Chase, man. It's just yeah. hilarious. I love they're booing in the crowd. I don't know mm-hmm. if they're going for like a, a brother sister thing with Stratton and and um, Waller, or if they're going for like a boyfriend girlfriend thing. I haven't really figured it out yet because they're not really romantic it's, with each other. It's 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 very much like popular girl. Uh, what is it? Football football leader. The jock and the cheerleader, yeah. but yeah, they're all like together. Yeah, the, jo- like, the jock they, and the cheerleader, but they're not dating. Yeah, they're just like in the same circles. They just hate they just hate the two nerds. <laughs> you know, the enemy of the enemy is my friend. I guess um, so. Wait, she took him shopping yeah. last week, so I'm so I'm, conf- I'm so confused. She, she tricking. That's okay. <laughs> my, friend, <laughs> ain't, my, ain't, friends ain't, my friends don't take me tricking. shopping. It ain't tricking if you got it, bro. I guess not. Come on, man. Um Wesley versus Nathan Frazier. I knew something was up when Nathan yeah. Frazier was walking backstage and that little Sophia, whatever the bit name is. Yeah. They made eye contact. I said, oh, brother. I said, King Von's coming. <laughs> um, the match was good for what it was, though. The match was yeah, hard. The match was, really, the match was really great. Honestly, I'm not mad. At Von Wagner coming in breaking it up, I felt like that match was too good to just be having on the random fucking uh yeah <laughs> you know episode of NXT. And I honestly I thought it gave a li- like I thought it gave layers to like a lot of other characters, you know, um or like you know I I thought like the aftermath of it was like really good, um 
when they went backstage and uh, him and Frazier, and then they ran into Sanga, and then Sanga was just like, "Hey man, chill, dog, yo, chill, bro. You yeah, got a lot of angst bro. right now. You kill yeah, the vibes. You not, you not about to win with all that shit on your <laughs> chest, bro. Relax, Come on, man. Hey, if Sanga brings him closer to enlightenment, no racial, <laughs> no racial. <laughs> I think that'd be fire, bro. I really I like do. That. I think it'd be fire, like, for him to just, like, you know, calm the fuck down. Because we don't, we don't know when Zion Quinn's coming back or what that is actually going to lead to. So if we just move on from that, I think that'd be really cool. And if him and Frazier, if him and, and if him, if it's going to be, like, a weird stable with him, Senga, and Frazier, that is a weird-ass stable, and I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with that. I, I, at this point, they might want to put Frazier in. Yeah, to put them together. It can, yeah. Honestly, that's a Nash Carter upgrade. If we're going to keep it a stack. Yeah. <laughs> we going to keep it a stack. That boy, uh, what? That boy, Wesley, better say, hey, man, what's your search history looking like, man? <laughs> you didn't do anything stupid, did you? Uh, what's, the, also, what's, the youngest, what's the youngest photo you could find of yourself right now? Right? When you're <laughs> Delete the all that. Delete it. <laughs> um, also, um, Von Wagner, he should be throwing niggas, bro. <laughs> It's just funny. Yo, he, he threw, <laughs> he threw, he, threw he them dumb far, bro. And you know what's funny as fuck about that? Is that Wade Barrett and Vic Joseph are like nowhere to be found. They saw it. They like, said they, they, <laughs> Wade was like, move. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and last thing here that I'll say is uh, Von Wagner. They hate him. Perfect. I think the only thing that he needs to learn how to do right now is taunt the crowd. Mm-hmm. Cause what is it when he threw him and then you know he just had his arms out and he just did like you know his uh just like the hand motion. I felt like he could have did like more. He could have like walked around the ring or some shit. Really got Talk the moves like amplify. You know, yeah, like you know, stared. he was yeah, too he focused just on the hard cam. Yeah, and it just stared at it for like a minute. Like nah, man. Yeah. Like do some more. Get some motion in your body, man. Get, like. Yeah. They can hate you a lot more right now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's very robotic. Yeah. Um, that's it. I just feel like, uh, you know, even though, like, we don't really, like, like him too much, but, like, I think he's making, like, right, him and Rob Stone, they're making the heel shit work. I just think, like, you know, be, get better at it. It, it just feels like there's no direction with Von Wagner. I don't even hate Von yeah, Wagner. There's, I think no. there's just no real direction. What's, like, yeah, like, what are we does, he even talk, does he even talk to Sophia, bro? Like, yeah. <laughs> David Shorty? <laughs> Like uh, you you DM her, bro. She she be letting you know who looked at her. <laughs> the wild gimmick. Um, yeah, that's a wild gimmick. You look you look at you like you look at this shawty. I kill you, why? Um, and we don't even we don't even know if Higman Jero is about to come back. So, um, we'll see what happens there. But oh that is it. Yeah, where the chair gonna be at? Hey man, next, I'm all for next it. on that mass on that mass call up. I mean mass uh, release. You're green as hell, but um, yeah man, that is it for NXT 2.0 and AEW. That is it for us. You can follow Quan at the Comeback Spot on Twitter. You can follow me at Cyrus uh, C R U S O N T W U R. And you can follow everything that we do on the A-Show Network at the A-Show RNC on Twitter. And you can subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the A-Show RNC. Not sure what we're doing for, oh, uh, for spot callers, I think we're going to do like, uh, we're going to do a Vader showcase. Nice. <laughs> um, Justin found out uh, on the last episode of spot callers, which you can listen to. Patreon.com for Don't tell me you never see Vader wrestle. Please tell me you never that was the first, that was the first time I seen Vader wrestle. Oh my god, bro! So we're gonna be doing I, the, uh, a, we're gonna be doing the deep dive. Um, I put you on. I the, like uh, Vader. Two thousands Noah Noah um Vader. All that just oh my god, Vader has so much. I, good, I, uh, I, I, I think we're Vader. gonna be we're gonna watch like three like. Well, I assume there's gonna be like three Vader matches that we watch. Um. I believe the poll should be coming up whenever Justin comes back from uh from his honeymoon, which will be like next week. So expect like a poll like next week or like the week after that. Um but yeah, man, the Vader showcase is gonna be very fun. Um 
no Patreon topic this week, man. I am very tired and I don't really feel well, but it is what it is. Um, also, um, check out um, A Show because me and the Sid yeah. Jones are on A Show this week with meals. Pro- professional athlete. Professional you athlete, know I mean? Sid Jones. D- two time two time uh, college graduate, Sid Jones, the legend himself. Conne- Connecticut's Ooh. own. You feel me? <laughs> He was supposed uh, to be wait, a war report a couple weeks ago, but we the schedules didn't work yeah. out because that man he's a busy man because he's a professional athlete. So um one day we'll get him on here. But yeah, man, I had a lot of fun doing that. It's funny because going in, I thought it was gonna be a real chill episode, nothing too crazy. And then literally the day the day before, the biggest walkout in wrestling since like Stone Cold <laughs> decided to happen. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I yeah. really- uh actually I guess we could talk about that a little bit. Uh, on the Patreon joint, it won't be too lengthy because, boy, said everything y'all went, li- yeah, y'all <laughs> went mad lengthy on the A Show uh, episode. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, but yeah, we can get into that really, really quick before we uh, hop off this. So, go ahead, man. Um, get shit off. Yeah, if you want to hear what we have to say on the topic, you know, just go over to our Patreon, subscribe, um, go listen to the A Show, go hear what Quan has to say, man. They had a very lengthy and educated uh, <laughs> discussion with all the speculation that's been had. Um, yeah, man. Uh, hope to see you guys on the Patreon next week. Peace.